Here we are in lovely Honolulu for the 38th annual Pacific Telecommunications Council annual conference. Um, and I am delighted to be able to have on stage with me Secretary General Hu Lin Zhao of the ITU and Dr. Robert Pepper, who is the Vice President for Global Technology Policy at Cisco. And uh, we're here to talk about IoT. And lots of people talk about IoT, but really what we'd like to cover is the implications of IoT for the developing world. So, Mr. Secretary General, what do you see as being the major opportunities in the way that the Internet of Things as a technology can really help address the problems, the enormous problems that the developing world is facing? Definitely, definitely. I think that uh, uh, IoT as a concept has been developed for some time. Now I see uh, this concept is accepted everywhere in the world. Last year, United Nations developed uh, sustainable developing goals with 17 goals defined. If you look at these 17 goals, covering from uh, adding uh, poverty, you know, public health, uh, public education, everything, then you will see that uh, IoT can offer extraordinary opportunities to assist these 17 goals. In my opinion, without uh, uh, ICT and telecom, without uh, this uh, Internet of Things concept, be put in place, I think that it will be difficult to achieve those goals by the end of 2030. And the most important observation I would like to share with you is that when I visit the developing countries, everywhere they talk about Internet of Things, and particularly those young generation people, small, medium sized entrepreneurs, they use their knowledge of ICT and telecom technologies. They understand their market. They see the challenges to their society. They try to help with their own solutions. And if we engage all of the, these uh, people with uh, those uh, uh, community, I think that uh, we will be able to achieve our goals very, very rapidly. So I'm very pleased to have an opportunity to work with uh, Cisco to publish this uh, IoT report for developing countries. So, Pepper, when it comes to the actual uh, benefits of the IoT to the developing world, can you give us some case examples, of maybe, of you know, what one would think of there? So, why is IoT important for the developing world? Uh, IoT is one of the defining and transformative, transformational technologies of our time. It has the opportunity to improve the quality of life for millions, if not billions of people across the developing world. Uh, just a couple of really concrete examples. The first has to do with medicine. Um, you know, smart sensors save lives. And a, a really good example is 20% of the medicine that um, is used in especially the rural areas of developing countries goes bad because it gets too warm. It's spoiled. It's not effective. And, you know, if there are now sensors that can be placed in refrigerators that can tell, you know, people, the clinic, the nurse, uh, whether the temperature has gotten too high, whether the medicine has been spoiled. Uh, and this is in addition to understanding and keeping the temperatures from the beginning to end from manufacturing all the way out to the field. This is saving lives. A second example is water security safe water to drink. There are over a billion people on Earth, on the planet, that do not have safe drinking water. So one of the problems is, in especially rural areas, people have to walk maybe half a day to a well uh, to find drinking water, and then they need to make sure it's safe. With new uh, IoT technology, with smart pumps, we know if there's water even available. Second, we know if the water that's available at that pump is safe. So we can improve health, we can improve water security, and we can get water for people to drink faster. It's going to be much more efficient. Uh, and again, smart sensors can save lives. I guess the basic question is, what does this all mean for your role at the ITU and how you see things unfolding? ITU, as a specialized UN agency for global telecom and ICT development, has put uh, connecting people, connecting the world as its uh, mandate. 
and we worked uh, with our industry, with our partners to develop global standards, industrial standards, to offer the better, always better telecom technologies, ICT technologies. We also encourage our community to create a better environment for investment uh, for new technologies. And in my opinion, Internet of Things cannot be become true, you know, if uh, you have no spectrum associated with it. And in my, also, in my opinion, in the future, uh, no innovation can be done with the effective without uh, assistance of uh, spectrum. So ITU is uh, only UN agency to take care of these uh, spectrum coordination issues. It's only global competent authority to work on this issue. So uh, ITU is very pleased to offer its uh, capacity to help uh, our community with uh, standards, with uh, spectrum, with capacity building, with uh, innovation, encouraging uh, approach to, you know, to develop uh, new technologies to connect uh, the world with uh, always uh, better technologies for a better life. Uh, for the people that don't want to delve into the report in detail, um, Pepper, can you help explain maybe the major conclusions and where we should go from here as far as successfully executing upon the recommendations in the report? So what do we do need to do next? Um, you know, we have three key actions that we've identified uh, in the report, and this is going to be part of the contribution to the UN Broadband Commission. The first is we have to, you know, really take hold of the moment. We have to act now. We cannot wait uh, because the industrialized world is moving very fast on uh, deploying and using machine-to-machine uh, -machine devices and the Internet of Things. Uh, and we cannot afford a new digital divide. We must do this, and we must do this now. Second, um, we need to invest early. And what, by investing, it's what I mean is, number one, uh, spectrum. The ITU is unique. Um, only the ITU really manages and helps countries globally manage global spectrum. We need more spectrum, the right spectrum, in the right types of places with a whole new set of requirements to, to meet the needs of the, of the IoT. Second, we need global standards because we need interoperability. We need the ability to move down that manufacturing curve that's going to further reduce the costs of all of those devices and sensors. Third, on the investment, we need data centers. We need reliable uh, power. We need data centers everywhere. Um, we need the global flow of information across those data centers in order to enable the IoT. And then the third recommendation, uh, the third call to action, is build trust. None of this is going to work. Nobody is going to use it unless we trust it. And what that means is we need to have, from the beginning, design in security by design privacy does by design. And it's going to require all of the players. Um, industry, it's going to require collaboration. It's going to require working with uh, governments, with standards <coughs> bodies, to have the R&D and have the work that's needed for security and privacy. And if we can combine those together, we'll help build the trust. Working with the ITU, and this has been just great, and uh, I want to thank the ITU. I want to thank the Secretary General for his leadership. Uh, and for, for uh, working with us on this. And we're looking forward to making this real, and we cannot wait. Well, this has been really eye-opening for me because when most people think about the Internet of Things, they think about things like connected toasters and connected refrigerators, the opportunity to leverage these technologies to actually dramatically improve and transform social welfare. So uh, this is great. Thank you so much, Secretary General Zhao. Dr. Robert Pepper from Cisco, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you.